every miracle looks impossible till it happens whether you need five naira or five million is still faith that will produce it so in the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter whether what you have whether you reduce it or increase it it makes no difference it is still faith that will bring it please understand what i'm sharing with you this morning and then you will no longer be afraid of the future speaking is only one of the keys that activate faith believing is only one of the keys that activate faith god is showing you what you might be doing wrong please sit for a few minutes for many of us all we do is in the name of jesus i am rising i'm going from glory to glory wonderful you are not wrong but speaking is not the only key connected to the miracles that you desire god is not a man that he should lie hebrews 11 and verse 6 this is the second information about god we are teaching faith this morning as a law that activates the supernatural the bible says but without faith outside of faith it is impossible to please him why because of this information that whoever comes to god must believe that he exists and then number two that he has a name called a rewarder it's not what he does it's who he is that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in other words don't come to god hoping you will get something don't come to god hoping he may give me there is a level of certainty and confidence that god is called a rewarder so every time i come the proof that i met him is that i never go back empty he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him not a giver a rewarder a rewarder means he gives you what you seek a giver means he gives what he has a rewarder the bible says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you know many people in church pastor teach about faith we teach a lot about faith and um, we do our best to communicate what we know to be faith but our results clearly show that many people do not understand the subject of faith because for many believers respectfully speaking our boundary of the understanding of faith is just declaring and hoping that we'll see no that is that is a very minute part of the equation of faith the foundation of bible faith is revelation not revelation about your situation revelation about the god who will be the deliverer of that promise before you trust a man if i tell you to come and collect a hundred dollar bill your first assignment is not to come your first assignment is to vet my integrity you have to check whether i have the capacity so there are two things listen please faith in god is based on two qualities of god not all qualities of god there are just two qualities of god that are required as far as faith is concerned number one his integrity please write it down number two his ability believing god is based on the awareness of his integrity and then number two his ability ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the bible says now unto him who is able so it settles it once and for all that God is able. There is never a problem with his ability. He is able to do, the Bible says. Able to do, not just able to speak. There are men who are able to speak. I can help you, but they are not able to do. So the Bible says that God is able to do. And then he says, exceeding abundantly, even above all we ask, now the fearful part is above all we think you know how vast your mind is your mind can think dimensions that will surprise you and the bible says that is it does not scare god he has the ability to allow your mind stretch itself and says is this all you can think i am still god above it so when your requests don't seem to come it is not an issue of God's ability because sometimes you see we look at the magnitude of that which we desire God to deliver to us and um, sometimes out of pity we say God okay it looks like you can't go this far okay so I come down to your level and God says the problem is never my ability 
So two things. The integrity of God. God does not lie. He can be trusted. Number two, God is El Shaddai. You know what that means? The multi-breasted one. He sustains the power to make everything that needs to be captured in your life for a fruitful Christian life available to you. This is the foundation of Bible faith. Just believing God arbitrarily does not bring faith. You have to vet his integrity. The Bible is a compendium of God's integrity. His dealings with men through several dispensations to the end that we can study and see the consistency that he is believable, that you can trust him. The Bible archives men and women who trusted God in time past. Now faith is, Hebrews 11 says, the substance of things hoped for. It calls it the evidence of things not seen. It says, for by it the elders obtained, the elders obtained, the elders obtained a good report. It says, through faith we understand that the cosmos, the walls were framed by the word of God. Then it begins to list all of these exploits that were done by faith. If you are going to partner with the realm of the spirit to produce possibilities in this life, you will have to understand the law of faith. There are no guarantees in life. Your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sent you. We live in a world where we are obsessed with guarantees. You have to sign that you will be there for me. You have to sign that you will not fail me. You have to sign that our discussion will not change eventually. Unfortunately, this world does not have guarantees. Your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sits upon the throne. So he can send you and say, go to US and not tell you what to do there. And yet you go, knowing that when you arrive there, he will speak. We are weak because we do not trust God. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. So don't tell me you love him. I already know. Take him there and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. You've not shown me the mountain. Just start moving. When you get there, I will tell you. Bible says, if ye be the children of Abraham, then you will do the works of Abraham. Trust in God. I believe God are we together now so revelation now the end of your revelation about God should produce something in you the Bible calls persuasion please say after me persuasion we're defining the faith equation now that revelation leads to conviction or persuasion it was the apostle that said for I know whom I have believed he said and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Conviction. What is conviction? Your depth of persuasion. Your unbendedness. I know he will do it. I know he will do it. If he said I will lift you this year, I know he will do it. I take my eyes away from the temporary setbacks because I know he will do it. Conviction. Conviction supplies your staying power when the situations refuse to change. Conviction, so you, you, you can say, no, I know this God. The reason why we vacillate in our trust and our convictions is because we have not had an encounter with the integrity and the ability of God. You know, the way God speaks, Pastor, he does not speak like he's talking to men. He speaks to men like he's talking to himself. This is why it's very frustrating to hear God. Many people like to hear God, but if you really hear God, you will wish you didn't hear him. So you will have an excuse to just live your life because hearing God has implications. It would demand a responsibility on your part that you will need grace for. For instance, God will not say, go and build that house. God will say, when it's complete, let me know. This is how God speaks. He does not talk to men like he's talking to men. He talks to men like he's talking to himself. So he will talk as if there is no process in the entire thing. Now you are crying over a bill of 1 billion naira, 2 billion naira, and God talks to you and never talks about the money. He says, ensure the house has space for children 
ensure it has a mission arm and you are saying lord this is not the issue we have architects in portacourt and god never talks about where the weakness is he expects you to trust him enough if ye being evil there is a name god is called abba abba means source it means sustainer it also means defender and the character of fatherhood according to god's teaching is giving if ye being evil know how to give so a father who does not give is evil are we together now i'm saying this because there are many of us who are wondering how will my destiny be built the dreams that I have, the visions that I have are mighty, they are enormous and you begin to stress yourself putting a burden on your uncle he was not designed to supply and get you are getting angry at people everywhere. Listen to me, save yourself that stress. There is a God in heaven who has integrity and ability. Every miracle looks impossible till it happens. Whether you need five naira or five million is still faith that will produce it. So in the realm of the spirit, it doesn't matter whether what you have, whether you reduce it or increase it, it makes no difference. It is still faith that will bring it. Please understand what I'm sharing with you this morning. And then you will no longer be afraid of the future. Every man you see whose life has become enviable today had no guarantees anywhere. There was no bank, no uncle, no nothing, no. Men went like madmen at the instance of the, the word of the Lord. Men went to virgin lands that they did not know anything about. Can you believe God enough? Apostle, I came to Port Harcourt. It's not my fault. I had a dream. God said, come here. Now I'm here. And look what God is making out of my life. We're talking God, the creator of the ends of the earth. The one who has said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. There are attributes of God that when you know, the devil cannot speak to you again. The devil manipulates your gaps in your understanding of God and he plants seeds based on attributes of God you do not know. The prodigal son knew something about his father. That no matter what it is, I know that my father loves me. And he said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son. But take me as one of your servants. Smart man. He knew the father will never take him as a servant. It's just a diplomatic way of saying, I'm sorry. There is something about God that if and when you know, even when you have a dream that negates it, oh dear, I wish I had time. I hope you know that the realm of the spirit cannot be made manifest until you receive and agree with whatever is there including your dream if i have a dream today for instance and i see myself maybe losing out in life or failing i can get up believing it has happened no the dream is seeking for your permission listen listen at the expense of your eternal salvation, God still seeks for your permission to come into a life he created. What else should not seek for your permission to come? You know, the way the devil has made us believe is like he has the ability to veto anything. No. He's a master of the sense realm. He knows how to manipulate spiritual realities. If God can be polite enough to knock at the door of your heart, and wait till you open it then that dream can wait then that oppression can wait they all knock you just don't know they are knocking they knock by acting they are in your life already so your fear allows them to come in goodness how did we get here let's go back to what we're discussing faith are you blessed this morning already so conviction everybody say conviction yes you need conviction i believe god i believe god i know he said this now watch this 
the next step you take when you are convicted please understand this the end of conviction in fact is knowing the participatory role you have to play in actualizing that spiritual reality now please wake up if you're sleeping because this is where believers have been cheated for many years they think all it takes to the equation of faith is to believe god and that's it you believe god well done but you will never see it manifest there is always a participation between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm to get anything transported from the realm of the spirit to this realm please never forget it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above um you know high above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you joshua 1 verse 8 this book of the law it says shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do not just to say faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what he commands that is attached to the promised for instance the Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Claiming the promises of God and claiming you are blessed without understanding the participatory role will only be you mocking yourself. Are we together? Every dimension of possibility we seek to transfer from the realm of the spirit has exact conditions. The assignment of the spirit of revelation is to open you up to the dimensions the requisite level of obedience you need to know what to do good master when poor people came to jesus they said help us when wealthy people came they said good master what should i do to be saved they knew that it, it, there has to be responsibility attached good master what should i do there, there has to be a posture that i take are we blessed apostle i desire restoration in my life there is a provision restoration restoration in the bible has always been based on discerning the prophetic voice that you need to approach to speak to you it is the prophetic that controls restoration according to scripture your assignment is to locate the prophet sent not the prophet available the prophet sent there are words that are spoken there are words that are sent the word that delivers is the one sent he sent forth his word not spoke forth his word there were many widows in zarephath the bible says so elijah passed some and greeted them and they greeted him back because he was not sent to them he went to the one he was sent to it is not just every available anointing that helps you it is the one sent to you discerning it now is your own assignment but when you do find it then restoration can come alas master for it was borrowed they met the right prophet and he said where fell it he threw a stick and it came up if they didn't have that miracle they will write a theology that god cannot restore come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you do what you do this season we need a hallelujah listen to me i will share with you a story that I've not shared in many platforms. Many years ago, I was in this city. I dropped at number 23, Equerry Street. Nowhere to go, nobody to see. I stopped there with one bag and 800 naira. That was it. Your city. 
by faith. When I was coming into this city yesterday, tears filled my eyes. When you see the end of faith, it is glory. Help him, please. Within a year, what God had done in my life is something I will reserve for another time. Please do not tell me it's because I don't know anybody. You are joking. I'm not speaking nonsense. I know what I'm saying. Somewhere in this city, the Lord gave me an instruction to give everything that I had. I carried everything. Put it in one bag. Dragged it. And dropped it in the church. And went back as though I was returning from a funeral. We are here for you. Come and for a few minutes for many of us all we do is in the name of Jesus I am rising I'm going from glory to glory wonderful you are not wrong but speaking is not the only key connected to the miracles that you desire speaking is powerful but the speaking is only activated when you satisfy the conditions for instance Apostle, there's nobody who wants to help me. There's nobody who wants to be my friend. No, and you begin to declare in the name of Jesus, good people are coming into my life. Wonderful, but that will remain as a confession. There is a condition for friends that he who desires friends must first show himself friendly. It is your responsibility to master the laws of relationship. And while you are studying, heaven is marking your script that you are truly preparing yourself to meet a destiny helper. It is your understanding the dynamics of relationship. That is, you are satisfying the participatory roles. Don't just confess. And then a bad attitude drives a destiny helper. Recycles your pain for another four years. Believers, hear me. The Bible is able to make men wise even unto salvation because it opens us up to the responsibilities. Are we together now? Yes. Apostle, I want people to listen to me. I want people to love me, whether in business or ministry. There are many dynamics to it. It is not just the grace of God. The anointing is... Look, let me tell you something. The anointing finds its credence from knowledge and intelligence. When, when the anointing comes upon, um, comes upon a life that is not enlightened, it will short circuit the potential of that anointing. The value of the anointing is when it comes upon an enlightened mind. Thou anointed my head, not my cup. The problem is not the cup. I want to see results in my cup, but what is anointed is my head. That's where the information is. So the anointing comes in partnership with the information that is on your head. And the result shows on your cup. So if you want him to anoint your cup, it doesn't work that way. The problem is not the cup. The cup is a report card. Thou anointest my head with oil. And then my cup shows what is on my head. Are we together? Yes. Hello there, Transform Believer. Welcome to the commentary section of Transform Daily YouTube channel. Happy New Month! Yay! Welcome to the month of May. We are in the fifth month of 2024. God has brought us thus far. I want to appreciate every one of us on this journey. 
um life god is being faithful and if you are here you joined us on this channel you've seen one or two of our videos and god servant has been blessing you through our platform we'd like to say congratulations because we know that by december 2024 when you look back at your life you will notice that everything has turned around you will see a new person you will see a new human you will see that god has dealt faithfully wonderfully with you i'm so blessed to be uh, part of your spiritual growth bringing you topics this month and even previous months on things that will edify you and set you on a path for unending spiritual growth in this month we are going to be focusing on deeper matters faith building our work with god praise finances um a spiritual life prayer and there's a video i posted yesterday on the realm of the spirit that video is deep it's an old video but you should totally go and see that video if you really want to know how to turn things around from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the physical you need to go and see that video because it will spoil you it will it will push you it will it will provoke you into taking actions actionable steps especially when it comes to the place of prayer now today focusing on faith god's servant apostle joshua selman was sharing the responsibility side of faith which is one very key thing to make faith produce that's not just about believing and speaking you know but you have to take responsibility for the things you desire god to do in your life so while speaking is good there are many people that say a lot of things and it doesn't come to pass empty talk one thing i want to add and one thing i want to say is that anytime that you have faith for something you have to find out where god's word has said that thing about it faith should stem from the word of god faith should stem from the knowledge of god's word concerning that situation once you don't know anything any word regarding that particular situation then that faith is empty it is not faith it is just mere talk hallelujah so if a faith is not is not rooted in a word that came from the bible then that faith is not is not faith that's why a lot of people say like i have faith i've been saying this thing and it has not changed nothing has happened that's because you're just speaking right there's light involved and there's the word of god and light through the word of god so so this is a build up from yesterday's teaching if you've not watched that video please i encourage you to go back and look for the video it's a video posted before this one you should totally watch that video all right so um that's basically it i really hope that you are blessed by these sermons being posted and i hope that this month generally the sermons that are going to be posted this month will bless your life and take you higher in your work with god and in your spiritual life about the subject of faith i believe that there is more to come so watch out for the next thing we are going to be posting you will learn more you will grow more and you will advance more in your work with god you know that for you to get anything from god for you to manifest anything at all no nothing nothing is impossible when faith is in place right it's literally the currency of heaven it's literally what pleases god your manifestation of faith pleases god your act of faith pleases god and know that you can't do that on your own it has to stay from a place of responsibility and knowledge in god's word thank you for watching we'll see you when we post another video thank you so much god bless you